In this video, we look at the effect of feedback on the offset voltage and we'll discuss a couple of methods to reduce its effect. With feedback present and using superposition to look at only the effect of the offset voltage, the model for both the inverting and the non-inverting amplifier configurations reduces to this. So again, using superposition, we've deactivated any signals that might have been connected to either of the inputs and tied those uh, inputs to ground. So we're looking only at the effect of the offset voltage. As you can see, feedback, the negative feedback, constrains the effect of the offset voltage of the output just as it does when we're, uh, just as it does the effects of intended or signals that we intended to amplify. Because the offset voltage is modeled as a voltage connected to the non-inverting terminal, we see that the output voltage or the effect of the offset voltage at the output is also amplified by the closed loop gain. So we saw in the open loop gain that the, uh, that the output was, uh, was a result of the open loop gain like 10 to the fourth or 10 to the fifth times VOS. And it very quickly saturated the amplifier. But with negative feedback in place, the amplifier is not so quick to saturate and the effect of the offset voltage is significantly reduced. In fact, it's amplified by the closed loop gain as would a signal applied to the non-inverting terminal. So for example, if we had a closed loop gain of say uh, 10 and a VOS of say 5 millivolts, there would be a DC component in the output due to the offset voltage that would be equal to 0 0.005 times 10 or 50 millivolts. There would be a DC offset unaccounted for from the signals equal to 50 millivolts. Or to say it another way, this offset voltage would add a DC offset that was not a part of the signal itself. If we're looking at AC sources here, that will manifest itself in just a 50 millivolt offset, which may or may not be all that critical. But on the other hand, if we're looking at, or if our inputs are DC, we won't be able to distinguish between the output voltage without the offset and the offset, or and the output voltage with the offset. There will just be an additional 50 millivolts of DC voltage in that case. There are a couple of ways to address and at least to some extent nullify the effects of this offset voltage. We'll look at a couple of them. Some amplifiers, some op amps, have a couple of additional external terminals that are used to nullify the, uh, the effect of the offset voltage. And to use them, you apply or you connect a, a uh, variable resistor tied to one or the other of the power supplies and then with no no signal present you can adjust the variable resistor until you drive the output voltage to zero volts. So if you've got an output voltage due to the offset that's negative you would need to compensate with a positive voltage and if you've got an output due to the offset voltage that is positive you'd be using a negative voltage to compensate for it. Another strategy is to capacitively couple the amplifier. Of course, the capacitor at DC serves as an open, as a uh, as an open circuit. So at DC, with this being open, then R1 is blocked out of the circuit, and we have effectively a voltage follower. Again, looking just at the uh, effect of VOS. At DC, and VOS is a DC quantity, the output sees not an amplified version of VOS, but just VOS itself. So capacitively coupling it doesn't remove, we can't completely nullify the effects of VOS, but at least we can minimize or reduce the effect by eliminating the amplification of that DC value. If you have 5 millivolts of offset voltage, there will be a 5 millivolt offset voltage component in the output. 
This strategy isn't without its complications. If the signal that you're wanting to amplify has a DC component to it, this method's not going to be satisfactory because it's going to be blocking the DC component and the signal that you're interested in in addition to it. But as long as the signal, the, the signal that you're interested in amplifying has frequencies beyond the cutoff frequency that would result from this series capacitor resistor combination, um, this method will work. What I'm saying is that by putting that capacitor in there, we actually introduce a high pass characteristic to the um, to the amplifier, and the cutoff frequency here will be one over R one C. So as long as the signal you're interested in amplifying or have frequencies well beyond this cutoff frequency. Um, this method may work for, may accomplish what you'd like to accomplish.